The Secret Enoch Knew The Bible starts with God. Everything starts with God. And the Bible starts with God. And the God who is, is the God of Scripture, the one true God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The book of Genesis starts with God. And in this book of Genesis, we are introduced to our Creator. And we are allowed to witness how He spoke the world into existence. In the first chapter of Genesis, we witness His power and great glory as the architect of the universe forms His universe into being. In the second chapter, we witness the natural order of things, and that is the creation of the first man and the first women, Adam and Eve. In the third chapter, we witness the fall of mankind and the introduction of sin. In the fourth chapter, we witness the first murder in history, which takes place between two brothers, Cain and Abel. In the fifth chapter, we are introduced to the book of the genealogy of Adam, which is traced down to Noah and his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And within this chapter, we see the phrase, and then he died, appear eight times. The Bible record speaks, Altogether, Adam lived a total of 930 years, and then he died. Altogether, Seth lived a total of 912 years, and then he died. Altogether, Enosh lived a total of 905 years, and then he died. Altogether, Canaan lived a total of 910 years, and then he died. Altogether, Mahalala lived a total of 895 years, and then he died. And this is all normal, because death is not an accident, but rather an appointment. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. However, in the fifth chapter of the book of Genesis, there is one exception, one man who did not die, but rather God took him. Genesis chapter 5 verses 21 through 24, And Enoch lived sixty and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. The one exemption in this fifth chapter of the book of Genesis who did not die is Enoch. He simply walked with God one minute, and the next he was not, for God took him. No death, no body, no grave, no funeral, no tombstone, no dust. Just taken by God. We find the secret of Enoch in the book of Hebrews. The writer of Hebrews beamed a searchlight on the life of Enoch. He demystified the pattern of Enoch's walk with God so that we can follow suit. How exactly did Enoch walk with God? This is the question in the heart of many who wonder how a mortal man could have such a close relationship with God. However, from the book of Hebrews, it is reaffirmed that Enoch was not different from any of us. He only did something differently. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 5 through 6. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. To understand how Enoch walked with God, Consider how two friends walk with themselves. They both have things in common, and they pursue the same purpose. When two friends are going in the same direction, it is easier for them to walk together. Enoch walked with God by maintaining God's direction consistently for 300 years. Notice the choice of words. Enoch walked with God. He did not walk ahead of God. He walked with God. He did not walk behind God. He walked with God. This means that Enoch only sought to do things that pleased God.
God was the primary focus of his life. He never swayed off or took his gaze from God throughout his life. He loved the things that God loved, and he hated the things that God hated. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, we can observe the reason for God's decision to take Enoch, which was his ability to please God. Enoch's key to pleasing God was his faith, as stated in the beginning of verse 5. By having faith in the God of Adam, unlike those around him who lacked faith, Enoch acknowledged the existence of God, appreciated him for creating him, loved him, and desired to know him. By walking in faith every day, he exercised his faith and took steps to find God. In all my years as a Christian, I have noticed that one of the most underappreciated verses in the Bible is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. For in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, we see how important faith and belief in God is to him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. This is what God is most concerned about. Do you believe in him? Do you have faith in him? The Bible tells us that Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Notice that Abraham's righteousness did not come from performing good works or giving to the poor, but from belief in God. It was a righteousness obtained through faith. The Bible tells us it is impossible to please God without faith. This was the secret to the life of Enoch. He walked with God, and he never died, and he was taken because of his faith in God. Enoch had true Bible faith, and that pleased God. There is nothing more fulfilling in a person's life than to know that God is pleased with me. We were created to please him. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. You were created for God's pleasure, and the Bible tells us it is impossible to please God without faith. The reason why so many people are empty in this world and are lacking purpose, lacking hope, or any type of fulfillment is because they are not fulfilling the number one reason they were created and that is to please God. The sinner doesn't need another psychiatrist. He doesn't need more introspection. He doesn't need to change a new leaf or whatever the world tells him. The sinner needs faith in God. We already have the information that he walked with God by faith. So it was not a physical side-by-side -side walk, but a faith walk. In other words, Enoch believed in the God he had never seen and chose to reverence and obey his laws in a perverse generation. Although many people around him did not regard or fear God, he believed in his heart that God is who he says he is and that he rewards those who seek him diligently. So, what is it to have true Bible faith? The faith of Enoch is to trust in him for your salvation. It is to not fear death like the Apostle Paul, but to see death as the vehicle that transports you into the arms of the Lord. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. True Bible faith is knowing what will follow you on this earth and where you will spend all of eternity. Psalm chapter 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. True Bible faith is not allowing your heart to be troubled and believing in the Lord God Almighty and the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 14, verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. True Bible faith is trusting in God regardless of your situation. True Bible faith in God is trusting God when he answers your prayers and even when he says no. True Bible faith is knowing all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. True Bible faith is not allowing the situation that you are in to turn you away from God. I am not moving forward. I thought I would be further along in life than this. I thought my life would be different by now. I thought I would be married by now. I thought God would have answered my prayer by now. I thought I would have a job or a business by now. I thought I would have finished school by now. I thought things would be better by now. 
I thought we would not be in this situation by now. True Bible faith excludes the situation you are in because the situation you are in has no bearing on the fact that Jesus died on the cross for you. And if your faith and trust is in him, you will spend all of eternity with him. True Bible faith does not waver in whatever situation. Enoch walked with faith with God amongst a generation that was sinful and lawless. Enoch walked with God. And do you know what? You too can walk with God in this age of deception, in a sinful generation. You can walk with God. And we see with the closeness of Enoch's walk with God, he was able to see into the future. Jude chapter 1 verses 14 through 15. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Enoch knew that God would someday punish the sins of humanity, and he prophesied about the coming days. Enoch was just the seventh generation of Adam, yet he could see beyond the first coming of Jesus Christ to his second advent. He saw over 5,000 years into the future. Enoch's revelation centers on the return of Jesus Christ to execute judgment upon the unrighteous people of the world. The prophet Enoch states, The Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment on the ungodly. This is one of the great warnings in the Bible to those who are living in darkness and those who are living in rebellion against God. Enoch told us that judgment is coming upon the ungodly and each and every ungodly person will have to give account of every ungodly word spoken and every ungodly deed committed against the Lord Jesus Christ. Enoch lived with the consciousness of God's righteous judgment of sin and preached righteousness to his generation. Repent! Jesus is coming to execute judgment. Enoch was a man who preached and prophesied about the judgment of God. And this is one of the many things you learn about God when you walk with him. God is a God of judgment, and because he is a just God, he forewarns people of the coming judgment. Coming judgment.